If you're looking for the perfect itinerary to see the highlights of Istanbul in one day, you've come to the right place. Today we're embarking on an exhilarating journey through the heart of Turkey's vibrant metropolis to discover why millions visit each year. From the iconic domes of world-famous mosques to the bustling markets of traditional bazaars, join us as we weave through centuries of history, savor the flavors of Turkey, and soak in breathtaking views that define Istanbul. From the airport to the city center, it's about an hour using Uber or taxi. And our first stop is Sultan Ahmed, the famous historical center that was formerly the capital of the Byzantine and Ottoman empires. A really great place to start your day is in the historical part of Istanbul in Sarayburu viewpoint. You can see people fishing, but the most important part is the view. It is a huge, huge, huge city, about 15 million plus in population, so bigger than some countries. That's why one day is obviously not enough to see everything, but it is enough for you to get a feel for it and to see if you like the vibe or not. Now we're going to head even deeper into the old town, into the historical part of Istanbul to see some beautiful mosques, some grand bazaars and a few more things that I'm gonna leave as a surprise for you. So I've just met my guide Kamal. Hi, hello. <laughs> Kamal, what are we looking at now? Because I'm seeing so many mosques surrounding me and a really big square. This area was arena on long time ago. On the Roma time also was soldier was fighting on the here showing the like presentation. It was here. So many things in one square. And I want to point out to you how many mosques there are. Like look, there's the Hagia Sophia, which is over there. Blue mosque right over there, which is spectacular. And look at this such a nice area for tourists to come to even if you're not a mosque person even if you don't want to go in per se this is just a really great area to spend some time looking around people watching enjoying the fountains maybe getting something to eat even if you are here for just today i think this should be your main attraction sultan ahmed mosque is the blue mosque we're going inside now there are quite a few people so while we're walking tell our viewers are you local? Have you been living here your whole life? How do you know so much about Istanbul? I like my history and I'm from Ankara, but uh, we love Istanbul. And Istanbul is like huge history, multicultural history, multicultural energy. Architecture is like high quality. So we've just entered inside the Blue Mosque and this is the first thing that you're going to see. Kamal was telling me about all the details that they use in the architecture here. And that's another thing to really admire when you come here. Everything has been thought through to the last miniature detail. As Kemal explained the importance of the 260 windows and almost invisible but necessary air gaps in this Ottoman gem, I was stunned to learn that the mosque is over 400 years old and still has a vibrant local community living around it. Kemal has just said that underground, like, like right here, virtually right here under us, there's a whole other city. What? <laughs> like some part of like tunnel inside. It yeah. was like for soldiers was going up from there and also near here, Basilica cistern. It was on that time, on the Roma time, it was a water system. We will go there inside. It's so amazing. And also some door is going to Hagia Sophia also. As you head down to the Basilica Cistern, you'll be amazed to see that this massive underground water reservoir covers an area of 9,800 square meters and features Roman columns that even made an appearance in a James Bond movie from 1963. Now time to visit the famous Hagia Sophia. This is probably where you'll spend the most time queuing, but I think it'll be worth it. Stick around and you'll see what's on the inside. Built as a cathedral also in the 6th century by a Byzantine emperor, it was known as the Hagia Sophia, which means holy wisdom. And it remained the world's largest cathedral for nearly 1,000 years. I can definitely feel very special kind of vibrations inside here. Very, very positive light energy. This is absolutely insane in terms of design, in terms of architecture, just in terms of what you feel when you're in here.
Hagia Sophia right here in the back. We saw it from the front, now we see it from the back. We're gonna go explore something else now, so stick around. Here's something that you need to be prepared for when coming to Turkey. Everywhere you go, you're gonna have metal detectors. So it feels like you're pretty much going through a security scan at an airport, but this is to ensure safety in all of the tourist attractions that you're gonna see here, as well as in hotels. And another top tip I've got for all my female travelers is wear a scarf when you go, because if you wanna go inside the mosques, you'll have to cover your head. Now, the place that we're going to now, can you pronounce it for me again, Kemal? Top Kapı Palace. Top Kapı Palace. It was about 400 years, it was head of his Ottoman Empire. I have to say, I got exceptionally lucky with the weather and I'm traveling in January. But it's not like this every year. Normally in December, January, it's about zero, maybe five degrees Celsius. Now it's about 14. So I am feeling very, very fortunate right now. But if you are coming in December, January, probably best to layer up. Well, we're taking a nice leisurely walk to lunch because it is lunchtime and I'm getting a little bit hungry. We are actually walking right across the tram tracks, which you shouldn't normally do. Actually, Kamal was telling me that here, above ground transportation is the most popular form to get around. Here, it's all about the tram and the car, and I've seen a lot of people on scooters as well. So, what are we looking at? Uh, this is, we are calling in Turkish, Dikilitash. Dikilitash. I'm learning Turkish. I've learned two words so far, I've already forgotten one of them. This is fantastic. Okay, so my first impression was why does the police need a Ferrari? But they've actually confiscated this car from a drug dealer and they made it into a police car and now it's a showpiece here. This is an electric car. It's a Turkish electric car? Yes, right. What's so special about the Turkish electric car? This is everything made from Turkey. Ah, and it's called the Tog. Yeah, like that. Okay, well, mosques, historical buildings, Ferraris, and Turkish electric cars. Who knew? We've just sat down for lunch, and I'm making a friend. Oh, oh my god, oh my god. Just came up to me. Oh my word, oh I can't. Istanbul in general has so many dogs and cats. I think I've pet them all by now. It's nice because the locals take care of them. Is this a sign for me to get a cat? You know, my dog won't be best pleased. Oh, okay. I live for Turkish cheese pastries. This is called a bohça, a traditional pastry filled with meat and fruits on the inside. <gasps> wow, the presentation is epic. Let me try the meat. Ooh, very, very soft. Mm. Slow cooked, filled with flavor. I'm definitely gonna enjoy this. Oh, what a good lunch, I'm feeling very full. Very, very happy. About an eight minute walk away from that restaurant, we are going to the Grand Bazaar. So that bazaar is historical. It is absolutely huge. We're gonna be finding a bit of everything in there. And my guide is actually gonna meet me inside. Another metal detector and we are in. So we're in the bazaar and it's absolutely gigantic. Uh, what's the history behind it? From a long time and the economy is turning from here, gold, and nowadays dollar, euro. We are checking first from here that price. Wow, so pretty significant for a bazaar. It is really, really grand and even when you come in here, the amount of people in one place is gonna surprise you. You'll find that if they see your tourists, they are gonna try to talk to you, try to bring you into their shop, but just respectfully walk away and you'll be fine.
time for another market. This is the local spice market. It definitely smells of spices as soon as you come in here. People are less harassy in this one than they were in the Grand Bazaar. But the people who do talk to me always speak to me in Spanish for some reason. Not really sure what that's about. All right, let's talk about safety. I am walking around alone for this section of the video without my cameraman, without the guide. And honestly, I don't feel unsafe. So that's really good for you single female travelers to know. Obviously it is a big and busy city, so you have to be aware of your belongings, have to be aware of your surroundings. I'm always making sure that my bag is zipped up close to me, that I've got my belongings safely zipped up into my pockets as well but I don't feel unsafe, so definitely a good thing for you to know and I hope that you feel the same way when you come to Istanbul. Next, it's time to jump in the car or on a tram and explore what lays along the Bosphorus on the European side, starting with Ortakoy, a popular waterfront district with a perfect blend of history and modern charm. Next is a gorgeous walk along the Bosphorus, but to get there you first have to go through a building and I'm guessing it is probably this one. I'll put it in a Google Maps link down below so you guys can check because actually it's not that obvious. It's basically a gift shop that leads you outside and you can walk right along the Bosphorus. It is so 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 beautiful and I got extremely lucky with the weather this afternoon as well. It's an area that's quite vibrant. There's a lot of nice hotels around here, but also, oh my God, look at this. How stunning. If you are lucky with the weather, this is something that I think is completely unmissable. This for me defines Istanbul right here in one picture. As you can see, it's filling up nicely. There's a lot of people from kind of everywhere just taking in the sunshine and the stunning view. What I've noticed, which has surprised me quite a bit, is that a lot of the people on here are actually locals. I thought that this activity was mostly popular with tourists, but no, I was proven very wrong when I tried to talk to quite a few people. Most of the answers that I got was, you know, a very obvious, we're from Turkey. <laughs> so there you have it, locals are still very much aware of the beauty of their city and I really appreciate that. It shows that they don't take anything for granted. I think that's super cool. That's Galata Port where I came from, virtually 25 steps away and we have come to yet another fantastic mosque. They're all so 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 beautiful, so grand, so majestic. That's one of the things that I love about Istanbul. You just have so many buildings that blow you away from the outside as much as from the inside. Today is a perfect day for viewing a sunset on a rooftop, so I've come to the JW Marriott Bosphorus and look at that! You can even go to the Galata Tower, which is all the way back there. Probably an even nicer point for sunset, but it just felt like it would be crowded today, so I decided to come here instead. As the sun sets ever so beautifully over Istanbul, I wanted to thank you guys for watching this video and for liking, commenting, and subscribing to my channel. If you enjoyed this video and if it's helped you plan your trip to Istanbul, why not check out this one next?